Greetings, everybody, from beautiful Montana. It's my pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. Thanks for having me. So, as Jeff said, my husband Paul and I do live in western Montana, and like you, we love our outdoors. Our community, like many others in the West, is surrounded by federally controlled public lands. And when I was first elected to the Montana State Senate, I knew we had some problems with federal lands in our area, but I didn't realize just how widespread these problems were or how simple the solution really is. It all starts with this map. You see this map? The red areas are federally owned lands. Half of all the land in the Western United States is controlled by distant bureaucrats and politicians in Washington, D.C. This great imbalance is not working, and it's not constitutional. For example, take a look at this forest. There's a property line dividing the ownership right down the center. The left side is federally controlled. The right side is locally controlled. Neglect within the federal forest has overloaded it with dead, diseased, and dying trees. It's an, an enormous fire risk and a huge liability economically, environmentally, and socially. But the local side has been actively managed with periodic timber harvests. The fire risk is lower, the trees are healthier, the forest is an asset, not a liability. And in case you're wondering, climate change did not cause this difference. It's management. And here's a closer look at a typical untended national forest where, unfortunately, protected usually means neglected. Instead of allowing selective logging or grazing to control vegetation, the U.S. Forest Service has left it to become dense, overgrown, and unhealthy. Vegetative fuel loads like this are a catastrophic wildfire waiting to happen. In fact, there's three major obstacles that federal land firefighters generally face. Heavy fuels, like you see in this picture, poor access, like you also see in this picture, and lack of necessary resources. So let's take a look at access. So dirt and gravel roads on public lands provide great recreation opportunities, and they open up a whole wonderful world to us. And these roads are also vital for natural resource management and firefighting. But the federal government has been removing access routes at such a rapid pace, our state legislature decided to study and document just how much. The results were astounding. Since 1995, the federal government has closed or obliterated over 20,000 miles of access roads on federally controlled public lands just in Montana alone. They've been doing the same thing in other states, too. Sadly, when a wildfire breaks out and seconds count, it takes the federal government days sometimes to get to the fire because they have to rebuild the very same access roads that they previously destroyed. The third major obstacle faced by federal firefighters is lack of resources. They often don't get the equipment or manpower needed to fight these fires effectively. Yet the federal government has actually barred Montana State helicopter teams from putting fires out on federal lands, even though our aircraft travel faster, carry more water, and have a perfect safety record. Instead of deploying all necessary, re necessary resources to put fires out when they are small and controllable, the federal government is notorious for letting these fires rage into costly, massive disasters. This chart here shows the number of acres burned in the West over the last 100 years or so. You can see that in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, when logging and grazing were prevalent, relatively few acres burned. But after strict federal protections were enacted in the 70s and 80s, the acreage burned has increased dramatically. For decades, the federal government has been placing federally controlled public lands into a lock-it-up-and-let-it-burn status. 
all under the guise of protecting the environment. Yet, millions of animals are being burned alive on federal lands every single year. Like this little bear cub that barely made it out, and this mountain lion that didn't, and these mother cows that charged into a burning canyon to rescue their bawling calves. And if all of those big animals can't escape these fires, what do you think is happening to all of those little ones? It's a crying shame that the majority of Americans and our elected officials at every level are letting this happen. The environment's not a museum. Hands off, don't touch, management doesn't work. Our environment is more like a garden, a very slow growing garden that is greatly benefited when we tend it with local knowledge by local people who actually care. For decades, federal protection has been leaving us with miles and piles of dead trees and miles and piles of burnt forests and skies full of toxic air and streams choked with toxic sludge, millions of dead animals, thousands of miles of access roads blocked, and hundreds of economically devastated, depressed, unsafe communities. Do you want healthy air, water, and wildlife? Abundant outdoor recreation? And safe, vibrant communities? Well, in order to get those things, we've got to entrust our public lands to local management that knows and cares. It's past due time to transfer federal lands to willing states. You know, even Canada figured this out, and they realized that we can have better access, health, and productivity on our public lands based on one simple premise. You tend to get better decisions when they're made by people closer to the subject matter. It's really not rocket science. So you may ask the question, has this been done before? Has transfer been done before? Yes, it has. In fact, Western states currently own and manage 40 million acres of public lands responsibly. And most of these lands were transferred to the states from the federal government back in the days when constitutional terms of statehood were still being honored by our Congress, a principle they've completely abandoned in recent decades. Can states afford to keep the public lands public? Absolutely yes. When it comes to public land management, the states are outperforming the federal government by 10 to 1 or better economically. So how do we do it right? In addition to pursuing a legal remedy through the U.S. Supreme Court, and we've researched this and we firmly believe we can win, we've drafted companion legislation called the National State Lands Act with these important safeguards. First, states can acquire land incrementally at their own pace. Second, promises to keep it public must be kept. Third, states must coordinate with counties in which the lands are located. Fourth, mineral grazing and water rights must be honored. And fifth, resource revenues remain in the state to pay for management. In the end, state, local, and federal governments all benefit from this, as does our environment and our citizens. Instead of catastrophic wildfires and polluted water and decimated wildlife, there is a better path. What is the answer? Transfer is the answer, thank you very much. If you've got problems with federal lands, transfer is the answer. It's the only solution big enough. We need you to learn more and join us at the American Lands Council. For more information, 
please check our website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org, or come on by and visit us in the exhibit hall. We've got a booth in there, and we'd be glad to answer all your questions and add you to our team. Thank you very much.